What is going on guys, welcome to a new video. So recently then I've been speaking to quite a lot of you guys on Instagram and in the one-to-one -one calls as well actually and a lot of people seem to have everything set up. So they've got their store done, they've chosen a product, they're running Facebook ads and yet they still can't make that first sale. So that's what this video is gonna be all about then. In order to make your first sale, there's a process the customer has to go through. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna be finding out exactly where the problem is and then once you've found that problem, you can go about fixing it which will ultimately then lead to your first sale so that means something guys that's the topic thank you for tuning in i hope you enjoyed the video and let's get straight into it what is going on then guys welcome to my computer so i've got another google document then to work through you guys seem to like this style of video but just let me know if it starts getting a bit boring and then i can change things up so if you're not getting any sales then then there's obviously a problem and as with any problem it can be fixed so the first step then is to actually identify where the problem is and to identify it then you must understand 100 percent you have to understand the process in which the customer is going to go through which leads to ultimately them making a process Process. So I've spent a bit of time, I've drawn out this highly detailed diagram as you can see. And this is exactly what that process is. So at the beginning then we have our customer. Now anybody who knows who this person is, make sure you leave a comment down below. It'd be interesting to see. So this is the customer at the beginning then of the beginning of the process, which is of course them at the Facebook ad. So they see our Facebook ad and that's where the process begins. And all going well then, our customer will travel this path, ending up at the bottom, which as you can see, the final step in the process, which is making a purchase. So the first thing is the Facebook ad. They see that, then they move to view content, obviously, they click on the ad go to our store then the next step is they add the product to cart then they initiate the checkout they add payment details and finally they finish off with making a purchase so what we have to do then is we have to go through each one of these stages one by one and we have to find out exactly where your customers are abandoning the process so we start at the beginning then with the Facebook ad this is obviously where they see your ad whether it's a video an image whatever it is they see your product they see your brand and if the problem is there then so what we do then is if we work through the process and when we get to the point in which the process is stopping, we work our way back and that is where the problem is happening. So if we're getting no clicks on our ads, then no visits to our store, no view contents, then we obviously know that the problem is with our Facebook ad. So what I've done then is I've made a list of all the common kind of problems that I see people making. So hopefully you guys can check these against your own Facebook ads and it will lead to some ideas to, hold, or to ultimately then help you fix the problem. So number one then with our Facebook ad is the product itself. So it might not be suitable for Facebook and a good way of finding out whether that is the case is look at engagement. So. Facebook is obviously a social media platform. It's where people engage with things and people only tend to engage with things then if it's relevant to them or if they enjoy the content. So you can look at what percentage of your video ad has been viewed or look at how many likes, how many shares, how many comments. If people see something that they like, then they they tend to engage with it. They'll like it, they'll share it with their friends or they might tag somebody in it. Or if they like the actual product, then the, the chances are they will watch the video all the way through. So look at what percentage of your video ad is being viewed. The next problem then is obviously the audience. So if you have a good product and people are engaging with it, you need to look at the audience and if you're not showing, you might have a really good product, but if you're not showing it to the right audience, then obviously they're not gonna buy it. If you're trying to advertise a dog product to people who own cats, then you're not gonna have much success. So the way in which you figure out whether that is the case is you have to look at things like the relevant score and the cost per click. If you have a really high cost per click, anything, now it's difficult to put numbers on this because ultimately it depends on what kind of product you sell, but if you're spending anything more than a pound per click, then it suggests to me that the audience aren't that very interested. But another way, another thing you can look at then is the relevant score as well. So anything kind of under a seven or an eight, then it kind of tells you that the audience, what you're advertising isn't really resonating with your audience so that it tells you that you're advertising to the wrong audience, if that makes sense. Now, it can be difficult to differentiate whether, between whether the problem is the product or the audience, but one way to look at it is if a product is getting really good engagement and it obviously shows that it's a good product, but if it's if nobody's buying it or clicking on it, then it shows that it's not the right audience, if that makes sense, because 
people can appreciate a good product and therefore they'll engage with it and they'll still tag their friends. They might see a product that their friends would be interested in. So they would engage with it and share it or tag it with their friend. However, if it's the audience is, that is the problem, then you'll get no clicks in it, if that makes sense. But if you're not sure on any of this, then of course, feel free, leave a comment down below. I do get back to every single person or reach out on one of my social medias then all the links are in the description. So moving on then, the next point that I see people making is the call to action. So make sure that that link that you put on your ad, whether it's in the text at the top or the actual link itself, make sure it goes straight to your product page. We want, as soon as somebody sees your ad, if they like it and they click on it because they wanna buy it, they're already sold on the product. They just wanna know who you are and exactly how much it is. So make sure it takes people straight to your product page. The last thing they wanna do, especially if they're busy, is have to go searching around your site to find that same product. So just take people straight to the product page, make sure it's clear and easy to understand. So make sure it says in capitals or on its own line, um, get yours here with an arrow and then a link and make sure it's a short URL as well because it just makes the whole ad look a bit cleaner and tidier. The last thing you want is it to look messy and your URL to take up two or three lines of text because you wanna use every P, every literally every letter, every word you have in your ad, you want it to be there for a reason. Number four then is engagement. So if there's no comments, likes, i.e. social proof, then that's gonna put people off as well because obviously people, people like to follow other people and if they come across an ad that just nobody's commenting on or nobody's engaging with, then it kind of rings alarm bells in people's head. They think, oh, hang on a second, why is nobody interested in this? There must be something dodgy about it. So the more comments and likes you have on your post, then the better. Now, one thing you can do is get the post ID of your ad. If you put a post on your Facebook page first, then when creating your ad, make sure you use that same post for all your ads. Then every time somebody sees it, it's gonna be building up the social proof on that same post, and therefore you're just gonna gather that social proof a lot quicker. Another thing you can do as well is just run $5 or $6 ads per day of just engagement ads just to build them up even quicker. And then moving on to the final point is your Facebook page. So this is the page that you're running your ads from. Make sure it's branded, make sure it's relevant to your Shopify store. People will check out the Facebook page that is running your ads. So if you've got no content on it, then it's gonna look dodgy. If the last few posts are you changing your profile picture or the cover picture, then it tells people you're a new business. It doesn't look very professional professional and ultimately it's going to put people off. You want people, when people see you and your website and your products, your branding, you want people to think of you as a really professional, well-established business. And if you don't give across that kind of impression, then people are going to be put off and they're not going to buy from you. Um, and then another thing as well is not many likes, etc. Now, when I first started, I just ran purchase ads and people would like my page even though I was running purchase ads. So that's one thing that will just come in time, that will come uh, with time. So moving on, the next step in the process, if we go back to our really high detail drawing. So let's say our Facebook ad is doing our job, then we're getting loads of view contents. People are coming onto our store, so they're on our store at this stage. However, the process breaks down here then, so nobody is adding to cart. That tells us then that the problem in the process is this very beginning one. So people are on our store, but they're not adding to cart. So there must be a problem then on our store. And if you're sending people direct to your product page, then the problem is on your product page, as it says here, no add to cart. So again, it's some kind of common faults I see people making. Hopefully some of these you'll notice on your own stores, be able to fix and help you make some purchases. So number one point is the store looks dodgy. Obviously, if your store isn't looking professional and slick or do, do all these things essentially, then it's gonna put people off and people aren't gonna buy from you. They're just gonna completely abort the process. So a couple of little tips and tricks then. Um, use neutral colors and layout, just stick. The best thing to do when creating your store, I tell it to people time and time again, is find a store that is doing well, that's getting high amounts of traffic and producing a decent amount of sales. Uh, people like Blue Crate, um, you can use my old store as well. Um, or just pretty much any store, even if you go on Amazon and just look at the overall layout. Obviously you don't have to copy it word for word, color by color, but just make sure the layout's the same. So if I just show you my old store in fact, 
<clears throat> so you've got your logo at the top followed by your different product categories have an FAQ a blog or about us page whatever it is free shipping bar and then you usually have like your theme image which advertise a certain product that you push in um, then you can have a collection list your best selling and then in terms of product pages um, just make it simple and to the point so again nothing fancy nothing just different just people like when people come onto a store or want to buy something there's kind of certain things that they expect and if it's out of the ordinary then it puts people off people like things to be as they expect so no surprises neutral colors and layout make sure you have reviews of your product obviously um, a good app to use is looks you can implement reviews from aliexpress make trying to implement reviews that include pictures as well trust badges i always include these on all of my stores um, things like guarantees as well we want to put a clear message across to our customers that we're legit we're safe to process payments with and we offer a guarantee as well so if for whatever reason they're not happy with their product that we will happily accept it back no questions asked Ultimately, then it gives off the impression of being impressionable, uh, professional, and then we need to make sure we have an FAQ about us page and all the different policies as well. Nobody knows who we are. If you're just starting out, people are gonna go looking for this information. And if you don't have this information, then people aren't gonna message you and say, where's your FAQ? Please, can you do an FAQ before I buy from you? It's just not gonna happen. They're just gonna probably just leave your website and try and find it somewhere else. Moving on to point number two then, so the product description is poor. I see it time and time again, people are spending money on Facebook ads and yet they've just copy and pasted the product description from AliExpress, which is just no good. Whatever you do, just do not do that. And in your product description then, you wanna sell the product to the customer. So show the benefits, like clearly highlight the benefits and features of the product and make sure they're relevant to the customer as well. So for example, then the LED dog collar, you could advertise the benefits being easier to walk your dog in the dark. That's relevant to the customer coming onto your store. If you were to just say something really broad, like um, it's really bright and flashes a lot, it's, it kind of is a feature or a benefit, but you need to make it clear and specific to the customer. Um, and then no spelling mistakes, obviously. Um, I do see it quite a lot when I'm reviewing people's stores, especially when it's copy and pasted from AliExpress. It just doesn't make good English sense. Um, and again, these are all alarm bells because what you have to realize is that because we're not a well-known brand, like people could probably forgive the odd spelling mistake on Amazon because people know who they are. But because we're somebody new advertising on Facebook, nobody knows who we are. The slightest thing can really put people off. Moving on, number three then, so images. Make sure they're not pixelated. You want high quality white background images. Make sure they're not branded either. Don't have no Chinese writing or any branding on them at all. Again, it put people off. And then the fourth thing is price then. So if your product is too expensive or too cheap, people aren't gonna add it to cart because they don't wanna buy it. And it can work both ways. So if you're trying to sell or advertise a piece of jewelry as being really good, high quality, you've got really nice images, but then you're only selling it for 10 pounds, um, the two don't add up, they don't go together. And again, it's just gonna make people question why it's so cheap. If it's such a nice high quality piece of jewelry or watch, then why is it so cheap? And if it doesn't add up, again, people aren't gonna take the time out. They're not gonna send you a question saying, why is this so cheap? They're just gonna completely leave your website and not make a purchase. And then finally, it's different to add. So if you're advertising a product from a, a different Facebook page or a different brand, and then when they come on your store, um, they're not linked, so they're not branded the same way, or if you're sending them to, to a completely different product or whatever it is, just make sure everything is linear and uniform. So that being said, then that is the kind of typical things I see people doing wrong on their product page. If we go back to the process, so let's say then, people are getting that far in the process. So they are coming onto your store and they are adding the product to cart, but then they're not making a purchase. So that tells us then for people to make a purchase, they have to initiate the checkout. And to do that, then the problem obviously lies on your checkout page because that is where people say check out. So again, I've got some kind of typical things you guys can have a look at on your site and hopefully put right. So only three things to be honest, the, stereo, the typical one that Shopify provides is usually pretty good. However, there are a couple of things that I recommend you do. So make sure you have as many additional payment methods as possible. So you can use Amazon Pay, but make sure you have PayPal at the very least. 
this is a really good thing to have on your store. Everybody sees PayPal as a safe way to check out. So by showing people that we clearly accept PayPal, I always put it in my Facebook ads as well. Um, it shows that we're not, that people can safely basically um, buy things with us. Number two then, no mention of free shipping or a benefit to checking out. Now, I usually add something like free. I always offer free shipping, so I always just advertise the fact on my checkout, just some sort of benefit, um, just to encourage them to complete the process and actually purchase the product. And then number three, now depending on what theme you choose, usually you'll get a message like shipping, taxes, and handling to be calculated at checkout, but get rid of that message, replace it with something like free shipping. The mentioning of additional costs at checkout is a big no-no. Again, people aren't gonna hang around to see what the additional costs are. They're not gonna message you and wait for a response before checking out. They're just gonna completely abort the process. We wanna make the whole checkout process as quick and slick and efficient as possible. We live in a world where there's so many different distractions, whether it's WhatsApp, Facebook, people getting phone calls, could be anything. So the quicker and easier we can make it for somebody to check out and buy something, then the higher our conversion rate is gonna be. So that being said, then if we go back to the process, to be honest, once somebody gets to the point where they're adding payment details, as long as you use the standard typical layout and process provided by Shopify, then you're not gonna have any problems. So that tends to be then where people have the most common problems. So they're the only ones I've included in this video. Like I said, if you use the standard Shopify uh, checkout process, then you shouldn't have any problems around the ad payment details. And that being said, then that's gonna wrap the video up there. Hopefully you, go, you guys are still watching. Hopefully you've learned something new. If you have, please do hit that like button. And that being said then guys, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.